Now, there are a lot of red sports cars, but very few are as iconic as the Ferrari Testarossa, which was often referred to as the reddest car ever made. And this particular car is the Rarer Mono Specchio, or single mirror in Italian. Some folks even like to call it the flying mirror due to the high mounted nature of the single mirror over there on the driver's side A pillar. This particular car was actually imported into the US as a Euro model in March of 1986, and it has less than 6,000 original kilometers, which is about 3,500 miles US. Now, if that sounds great to you, this car is actually for sale. It's going to be heading up for auction on Bring a Trailer as offered from Casio Motors. So you can win this exact car, which has an original exterior, original interior, and even a rich service history documenting the engine, which is also original as well. So in this video, we'll go through the exterior, the interior, the powertrain, and of course, we'll take it for a drive. So moving on to the exterior of the Ferrari Testarossa. First off, this car is of course finished in the iconic Rosso Corsa paint with the beautiful iconic wedge design, which was of course penned by Pininfarina, which we can see their badge right here on the side of the car. Now this new wedge design, which was of course similar to the Berlinetta Boxer model, was actually actually changed for a variety of different reasons. It was actually significantly wider for the Testarossa, adding about 12 millimeters in the front and 105 millimeters in the rear. Now, one of the big changes they did was they moved the radiators from the front of the car, which meant you had more space in the front of your Testarossa for your six-piece luggage set that this car will include in the sale. And they moved the radiators to the side of the car, which is why it got so wide here in the rear. Now, because they had these big holes in the side of the car, cars for the intakes for the radiators, they had to add these now famous side strakes, which would become so famous, in fact, you would see them re replicated on various kit cars like Strosek and things like that that would come out later in the 80s. But these were actually added for legislation purposes. They were required to make sure that there were no babies or pets that would get sucked into the intakes of your Ferrari Testarossa. You can take a look there and see the radiators on the inside of the side strikes. It's also a cool way that they actually hid the door door handle, which is just under the lock here, and you can go ahead and close the doors of your Testarossa. Now, as we come back to the front of the car, we can see that we do, in fact, have the very 80s, very sleek pop-up headlights, along with a variety of other lighting in the front as well, and this nice little lower black uh, splitter. We can see that we have our Ferrari badge. We, of course, have our frunk, our wipers, and then the very infamous Mono Specchio mirror. So this mirror is actually a sign for early cars, and it's actually a rarer option. Now, this is how the Testarossa first debuted, but it was met with mixed feelings by the public. Therefore, in 1987, Ferrari opted to switch to a matching dual mirror design. And that makes the Mono Specchio a rare car with somewhere between about 1,000 and 1,500 cars produced in total. Now let's go ahead and talk about the wheels for a sec. So these wheels absolutely look correct, but they are slightly different. They are in fact 16 inch five spoke wheels with the center lock design with the chrome Ferrari caps, of course, on the Rudge hub except these are reproduction wheels. Now, the reason for that is the actual wheels, which will be included in the sale, are actually a metric fitment. And in fact, the Michelin TRX tires initially intended for them, turns out you don't have those here in the US. Therefore, you buy these, and now we have these BF Goodrich G-Force Comp tires on it, and now you can actually drive your Testarossa with real tires. So you don't have to worry about that, but the original wheels will be included if you want them. On top of that, the Testarossa did feature a staggered fitment, so to speak, about 8 inches wide in the front, and then you had 10 inches wide in the rear. As far as the overall construction, it was a mostly aluminum body with steel doors and a steel roof, of course, for safety. And underneath, in typical Ferrari fashion, you have a tubular steel chassis with fully independent suspension, and you even feature anti-roll bars front and rear, so all very good stuff. Now, as we actually come around to the rear of the car, you can see we have our locking gas cap there, but we actually have a third brake light. This car, being a Euro model, wouldn't have had a third brake light, but when it was imported in March of 1986, this would have been added to make it road legal here in the U.S., and it sits atop the engine cover of our flat 12. We have our Ferrari badging, and of course, more side strakes, so to speak, in the back of our Testarossa. 
Now that is met with our Testarossa badging, which is very, very iconic, but perhaps most important is this horse. Now this is the Ferrari Cavallino, and on most cars it gets modified. It's sometimes chrome, sometimes it's satin silver, or whatever, but this is actually how it came from the factory, so this is correct on our very original Rosso Corsa exterior with, of course, our twin exhaust. That's a quick look at the very iconic exterior of the Ferrari Testarossa. So let's go ahead and move on to the interior of our Testarossa. Reach under, grab our door handle, and now we get access to our two-tone Crema Connolly leather interior, which also features these brown accents for the dash, and even the door panels are actually two-tone as well. So all cool stuff there. Now, the car smells very rich of leather. This being the luxury grand touring car, there was a big emphasis on comfort and overall usability, which includes the fact that we have the six-piece Ferrari Testarossa luggage kit, which is, of course, also branded, fitting two pieces here in the back, and the other four pieces stack beautifully in the front of the Ferrari Testarossa, which can be accessed from this beautiful chrome bezels here. This one here in the front is actually for the front, and this one here in the rear is for the trunk or the hood, depending on what you want to call it. We do have our handbrake, beautiful Ferrari badging, but let's get in and take a look at what's going on. So we go ahead and climb into the Testarossa. We are in our awesome leather seats in the command of our sporting grand touring car. Now there's a lot of cool creature comforts in here as well. Most importantly, I want to point out that the steering wheel itself is actually adjustable. That's not a common feature in old cars. A lot of cars, including newer than the Testarossa, don't even have that adjustment. So that's a great feature that makes this car much more approachable than certain cars. We do have our Veglia Barletti gauges, which would have been original to the Testarossa. And you might notice that there's vents in this car as well as the Testarossa also came with air conditioning, a great feature to have in a luxury car. Now, some of the other cool things we'll see in the center here is we can see our odometers here at the bottom, which are in fact in kilometers. So we can see that it has 5,800 kilometers at the time of filming. And then below that, we of course have our beautiful Ferrari gated shifter. So this is a dog leg. So first is down into the left here and it clicks up in the second and third beautiful clicking sounds in that gated manual transmission. Now below that, we do have some of our AC controls and these are pretty fun with the way that they work. Now, currently it's in stop, but as you push buttons, it pops up like whack-a-mole. How funny is that? We have some more controls below that, including our hazards and parking lights that pop up when in use. So that's a great feature as well. And then we do have our window controls in the center, along with our power mirror controls as well to adjust our mono specchio single mirror out there on the side. So that's pretty cool. We do have a storage compartment here in the middle, which will actually pop up to hold your cassette tapes. Not something you'll be using much these days. But if we go ahead and take a look over here, we do have our fog lights along with our heaters and various other lights as well. So all very cool in terms of the overall fit and finish of everything in here. Another cool thing is that the pop-up headlights, which can be adjusted using this lever here, work when the car is off as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. But the coolest fun fact of them all perhaps is gonna be with this key right here. Now this key is the Testarossa's key and it does bend. The reason for that being there were some complaints with the predecessors of the Testarossa. So now when you put your key in for the Testarossa, you can actually bend the key down and now your knee, when you're driving your car over here on the gas pedal, is not going to touch the key in the ignition, which is a great feature. And of course, I have to do it. The horn in this car sounds hilarious and is iconic. That's great. So that's a quick look at the Testarossa. It's a great looking interior with lots of cool features and it's just a phenomenal car to really experience no matter where you're looking, even in the back or the Cavallino Prancing Horse branded headrests as well. It's a beautiful car on the inside as well. Under the hood of the Testarossa, we have a ton of cool things to talk about when it comes to the powertrain. Most importantly, starting with the name, Testarossa. That means redhead in Italian, and that refers to the fact that this flat 12 engine has red camshaft covers, or red heads, hence the name. On top of that, this engine was derived from the Berlinetta Boxer, but it's not actually a Boxer engine. A Boxer engine implies that the pistons have an opposing firing order, and that's not the case here. The firing order in this car is more like a Ferrari V12, but let's say you flatten that engine 180 degrees, and now you have a 
flat 12, specifically a 4.9 liter flat 12, good for about 380 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque, which was paired with a five-speed gated manual transmission, sending power to the rear wheels. Now, even though this car is grand touring in nature, it's certainly not a slow car by any stretch of the imagination. This car will do zero to 60 in just 5.8 seconds, a quarter mile in 13.5 seconds, and it has a top speed of 180 miles per hour. This car is seriously fast, especially for 1986. Now, this original engine, which has less than 6,000 kilometers on it, or around 3,500 US, has a documented service history as well, including major services with one in 2018 which resulted in replacing the all-important timing belt, and another one in December of 2023, which included a variety of other services as well for about $15,000, including things like replacing the water pump. So very important features to all keep the car meticulously in shape with its beautiful low mileage example. So there you have it. That is a quick look at this rare monospecchio 1986 Ferrari Testarossa, which is also for sale, by the way. So if you're interested in purchasing this exact car, head to bring a trailer auctions as offered from Casio Motors, and you can win this very original example with less than 6,000 kilometers or about 3,500 miles US. Now with that, that's also the end of the video. So if you could go ahead and hit that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it and consider getting subscribed for more content like this in the future. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.